I'd like to believe that every Filipino would enjoy this book. It's really written brilliantly, honestly. Um, I, I don't know if the topic is for everyone, but the way it's written is really good. And I really enjoyed it very much. It definitely goes into my top books list for 2020. I love books and I read a lot. This year, I made a personal goal to read one book per week. And in this series, I will share with you some of the books that made quite an impression on me. I hope you enjoy this. Okay. Okay, so this book right here, The Quiet Ones by Glenn Diaz, is one of my top books for 2020. And I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> So first of all, he's a Filipino author, and that's a big plus for me. And and it's not new. It was written way back in 2017, I think. Um, and it's also a Palanca winner, winner 2017 Palanca Grand Prize, right? So I have my notes here, so I don't forget what I'm what I'm supposed to to share. Um, so one of the things I love about this book, or maybe just a quick synopsis of the book, it's about a bunch of um, call center agents who decided to steal from the company they are working for, right? Because they, they slowly like transfer X number or x hundreds of dollars into their own bank account without the company knowing it so that's the premise that's the hook okay that's the hook but that is not the story that's just um for me parang parang background lang siya it's it just gives you a sense of what it's like um in the bpo industry and what you know how how common that scenario can be and if you would recall even back in you know in the bpo boom here in the philippines siguro mga around 2000 yung start niyan mga 2002 2003 and 4 but then the the real boom of the bpo industry is somewhere around siguro 2005 6 7 8 mga ganyan and you we've heard it happen a lot of times before um, and not just with the BPO industry, but even in the banks, you know, it happens. And like I said, it has the, the, the real meat of this story um, is not about the heist or it's not about the, mon the money heist. It's not about the, the robbery, not at all. But rather, that just gives you a sense of why these, um, these call center agents felt like they needed to do that, right? And... The real story, the real story and the real beauty of this book, of the story, is that it's really an examination of what it is to be a Filipino. Or what does it mean to be a Filipino? What does it, what, what does it, uh, what, what is our identity? Who is the Filipino? That is the interesting part. Because it, it, it tells, the story is told from different perspectives. It has multiple characters with multiple, several um, uh, timelines and, and flashbacks, right? Just so it could give you the big picture. But everything, all the characters here and all the timelines, all of the, all of the characters' stories tie up into an overarching theme or plot and gives you a sense of what the story really is about. It is not written in the conventional sense. Hindi siya yung parang once upon a time. Hindi siya yung conventional narrative na chapter one, um, you know, boy meets girl. Chapter two, girl likes boy. Chapter three, hindi siya ganon. It's it's completely different. It comes in in different timelines, and it each chapter is told by a different perspective, by a different person. Sometimes completely unrelated to what happened to the previous chapter, but then all of them. All of them tells you the same thing, which is an examination of what it is to be a Filipino a mid, in the middle class, um, struggling Filipino at that time around 2008 uh, time frame. Ganyan. So it's it's very, it's it's deceivingly deep. <laughs> Yet I guess that was the biggest 
and most pleasant surprise for me. It's an easy read, okay? It's an easy read. Hindi naman siya masyadong hindi naman siya masyadong serious. Um, but it definitely tackles a very serious topic. But the way it's written or the tone of the book of of the author is very matter of fact, very direct. And he tackles serious topics like identity, sexuality, homosexuality, um, post, you know, colonialism, um, you know, relationship with with foreigners, and your your own moral compass and where you stand in your family, like, uh, mga ganyang serious serious topics. But he told it very matter of factly, very direct, like completely. Um, giving you sp- you as the reader giving you the space you need to really absorb it and make judgment about it another interesting perspective here um is an examination of not an examination but the perspective of of a foreigner or of a non-filipino um so there is a there is that perspective in the book Right. At some level, yung character na yon, and I'm sorry I forgot the name of the character. Pero yung foreigner na yon, he's a good guy, right? He he's a good guy and he gives off this genuine sense of love for the Philippines and the Filipino. But also the way the author wrote it is very foreigner, meaning to say as with any foreigner, they have this kind of sense of romantic um, view point of of our of Metro Manila right so for example there were scenes in the book na magkasama sila nitong nitong a friend niya i think they were lovers or friend I, i'm not exactly sure about their relationship pero magkasama sila diyan and then the filipino would view the the surroundings as you know magulo madumi it's just typical maingay um, streets, but from a foreigner perspective, he sees it differently. He sees it as as history. He sees it as uh, used to be the pearl of the Orient. He he sees it as you know completely different different lens, right? From a Filipino, Filipinos we don't we don't look at our dirty streets like that. We don't you don't go and walk into Ermita and and bet in Manila and see wow pearl of the Orient Kenyan. You know you don't think that way, right? But from a foreigner perspective, that's what they see. And I thought that was a very interesting take. I thought that was a very inter- interesting point of view. Um, he was neither, you know, neither one of them were right or wrong. It's just, it's just what it is. You know, you, you view things differently from where you stand. So from a foreigner's perspective, these are all, you know, romantic and historical and, and nice. Even with all the poverty, there's a certain level of romanticism. From, from a foreigner's perspective, right? But from a Filipino perspective, it looks different. It, it just looks poverty. It just looks dirty. Ganun lang siya. So, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm neither with um, the other, but what I thought was it's very interesting that the author um, put it there because I think it's, it's very important. There were two foreigner perspectives in the book one is the australian lady and the other one i think he's yeah the american dude and yun nga, they, they have this common perspective somehow and there is that there is that very subtle very subtle underlying um subject of of almost racism but not really <laughs> and i may be wrong baka hindi yun ang gustong i- pahiwatig ng author pero that's what I got right he did not say it outright but there's that feeling that when you are among foreigners uh, and there is a Filipino the Filipino would often be the second second class citizen even in his own nation even in his own land there is that very subtle very well written part in the book na parang mas even our kapwa Filipino na mas mas gugustuhin natin yung yung foreigner mas respetuhin mo yung foreigner kasi i don't know kasi baka ganun eh baka dala natin yun eh sa history natin na 
you know, they came here, they have money, they have influence, and we love them for it. So even until now, maybe, even until now, when they come here, we kind of, you know, we, we're just like that. We're hospitable like that. But also, maybe because we admire them that way, I don't know. But the sad part, it's no problem about admiring them at all. But I guess the sad part about it is the double standard that happens, that when it comes to foreigners, suddenly you act differently versus to your kapwa Pilipino. I guess that's the, that's, for me, that's the point of it. The author did not say it, in no way did the author say it that bluntly, no, but that's what I got reading it. So that's one of the things I love about the book. So yeah, I guess, yeah, that's one of, that's one of them. Definitely an interesting perspective. It resonated, this book resonated with me more um, maybe because I do have my own biases because I am Filipino and I have plenty of friends in the BPO industry. So in a way, I kind of, you know, I kind of relate to it and I, 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 I know the places. You know, he talks about Makati, he talks about Metro Manila, EDSA. We all know that. So, you know, me reading it, parang I'm there. I'm right there. I know what he's talking about. So... For me, that's an additional kind of plus. Maybe that's why I loved it. But more than that, it's really the the examination of our identity. Like, who are we really? Um, what makes us Filipinos, right? With so many um, influences and, and you know, post-colonialism um, identity crisis sort of. Uh, what, what makes a Filipino Filipino? So, so yeah, for me, that's the meat of it. And I would recommend you to read this, um, you know, when you're in a mood to try, uh, when you're in a mood to try a, a slightly serious or deeper look into the BPO industry slash um, middle class, struggling middle class, Filipino and you know and yeah identity of Filipino identity and I hope that I hope that I could you know I somehow gave you a sense of what this is about um, I got this in fully booked admittedly matagal ko na siyang gustong basahin but you know I forgot and then finally I saw it in fully booked it's there so I'm sure they have a copy they could get you a copy if 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 you're willing uh, to read it and it's by you know from a price point perspective by way of fiction books go this is relatively cheap for fully book standards it's 470 pesos um and again for a fully book that's relatively cheap and it's a filipino author so try it thank you Yeah.